So Steve, absolute pleasure to meet you. What a glorious day here in London. Um, <laughs> it's great for you to be here because I appreciate you had a late start this morning. Yes, indeed. Um, we're here at the Worldwide um, Web Foundation Index launch. Um, it's fantastic, interesting talk earlier. Um, you're an advocate of internet freedom, a regular user of Twitter, almost 5 million followers. How important do you think this index can be for, for taking the internet forward and what we know? I, I think it's immensely important. I think. Um, most people will have heard of the idea of analytics, which is to say how the, the, the knowledge that companies and uh, services have about you as a result of your various uh, exchanges and movements on the web mm. uh, are totted up and counted up, and how people who visit your websites can be broken down into areas of geography and so on, you know, literally analyze the traffic of, 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 of the whole web, and this is known as analytics. Now, we know that Google basically makes its money by doing that. that, that's how it makes, that's how it allows everything for the low, low price of free, as they like to say. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Now, what, what the web index is, is, it's not Google, it's not that I'm saying that Google is evil or anything, but it, Google has a primary purpose, which is to make money for its shareholders, and, 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 um, and Tim, from the moment he invented the World Wide, World Wide Web, it really is extraordinary, I saw it as a force for for openness in science, openness in politics, openness across continents, in ways in which information can be exchanged for the better to see that peace and stability and knowledge were furthered. All the all the great virtues that you might think of as being expressed in the great days of the Enlightenment by yeah. Diderot in, in terms of the Republic of Letters being a, a free place, a free one world in which ideas were never were never poisoned, um, as it were, by, by being controlled by, by despots or politicians. Um, so having Tim at the at the top of it assures the authority and probity of the of the, of the foundation and its its course in in making this new study, if you like, this this index. And it will look all around the world and see where availability, infrastructure, um, uh, openness, and so on, and take up and, and use uh, are best exemplified. And it will, it will award prizes, as we did today, to Sweden for, for, for having you know, the best of all of those. Um, and it will point to, where, to areas where there is the least opportunity um, to get online in any meaningful way, and it's all where it is most controlled from government and, and so on. Um, and, and this will alert the world and it will alert markets, it will be useful for businessmen, there's no, there's no doubt it will, but it's not primarily for their purpose, it will be useful for charities and NGOs, for all kinds of people. Um, and, and I think it will be, I think it will be perfectly possible in a few years' time you will have a child at uh, school and indeed university who studies, I don't know, to give it a better word, webology, etc. Because webology sounds, yeah, a bit, yeah. sounds a bit wet, yeah. so they'll probably call it web, web analytics. But they won't be studying, they won't be doing IT, they won't be doing how to build a website, they will actually be studying um, I thought that mixture of geography and socialism and, and, and politics, which means how so they might, might take a ten, ten year period of, of, of how the web grew or indeed shrank in South American states or how it, uh, what happened within China as the Great Wall of China was erected and, and the social networking site that, that was China specific and how they uh, could be or couldn't be related to those outside ones like Twitter, what social, social network, or whatever, social, uh, uh, various kinds, mm. uh, and so on. You know, you'd actually it would be an interesting study that would, would, would take in all kinds of politics and economics and everything else. So, uh, so I think I think it has an enormous future, and and it couldn't have this future if it weren't headed by someone like Tim, who is uniquely trusted, um, and and has no doubt his scientific method as well. That he will oversee that it's done with scrupulous science, and that it's. Um, uh, it's done for the benefit of mankind, you know, without getting all certain, uh, silly about it. He is a true idealist, Tim, mm -hmm. and uh, he could have been a billionaire time, many times over. It was a very funny moment in his talk when someone asked, is it true that you can turn the internet off? <laughs> he had his uh, white cat stroking Bond villain moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely, Stephen. And just a couple of um, final point, points. If you could look at the index, then there's been some risk to the internet now, um, looking ahead, um, the way people use it, the control over it. Mm. What risks do you see which people could encounter? Obviously, on Twitter, you know, the, the medium now is fantastic mm. for sharing ideas and thoughts and images so mm. quickly quicker than mainstream news, but do you see the threats for the internet way um, forward? Yes, I mean, I suppose you could you could look at it in two ways. There's, there's one, there's the enormous power of crowdsourcing and, and, and all the sorts of 
you know, crowdfunding and um, uh, flash mobbing and, and dedicated denials of service. That the, yeah. the sheer numbers involved that can be mobilised, not ne necessarily as legs on streets and boots on the ground, mm. but but it can be mobilised in, in, in electronic terms, is, is, is shattering. I myself had this terrible problem when I, people uh, ask me desperately for, for some noble charitable cause to, to, to highlight their, their web page and I say, hey, have you checked your service? Can it take extra traffic in the service? Say, oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Three seconds after I do, <laughs> it's dead. Mm -hmm. um, because it's just numbers. It's, it's, uh, if you have five million followers nearly, um, I think that's 20,000 a second. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not rare at all. Mm -hmm. But when you when, when you suggest a site, yeah, yeah. very few. I mean, unless you're the BBC or, or, or you know Facebook or, or, or YouTube, you can't take twenty thousand hits a second in one go like that without. Yeah. Even if you've been warned. So, so I feel very bad about that. So, in, in to take that to its political answer to try and answer your question, the side of the, the internet that is very good though is 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 where it can as it did with the Arab Spring, it can help mobilize and encourage mm. and let people know that they're not alone in thinking that maybe we can march together and we can stand under the balcony of the hated leader and force him to resign without too much bloodshed, which would just be wonderful. You know, and there was bloodshed in, in, in Algeria and in Libya and in, and, in, and in Egypt, but nonetheless, things may be better. On the other hand, you can see that in Syria it's had no effect whatsoever. Mm. Absolutely none, absolutely none. And Iraq, frankly, no, no effect either. <laughs> and you can also say that sometimes tweeting and uh, a cause can have a, 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 a negative effect. Yeah. I, I couldn't help myself but, but express my opinion about, for example, the, the, the pussy dolls and the trial in yeah, Russia. Yeah, but yeah. because I, I, I love Russia so much. I mean, if it was in China, I'd, I'd you know, try and say the odd thing, but I have no connection with China, and I'm, not, I'm rather ignorant about it. But, but Russia, I, Russian literature is one of my passions, and Russian people I love very much. They are incredibly loyal to me and mm. extremely fond of the st stuff I do. I have more Russian fans, I think, than <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Um, and um, so I was just so upset because it wasn't good. It seemed to me so, so awful and so unjust and so the way Russia shouldn't be going to see Putin. And of course, uh, every you know, 100,000 who signed petitions for each one that flipped mm. over, Putin hardened his heart if he had mm. such an organ in his chest even harder. And he saw himself being shown off rather well. To, it played well to his certain level of his supporters. Yeah. But he was the bare-chested gonzo who, who, was, who was not paying attention to Western liberals with their Western liberal values, yeah. which they could sneer at. Because his values were the values of Mother Church in, in, in the face of a huge bearded uh, 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 orthodox um, priest and they were the value of mother Russia none of which anyone else understood and so the, the Russian nationalist movement the, 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 it's that toxic mix yeah. of shaven headed brutes and the church together which sees gay people being kicked to death in the street and that's and it also reminds one incredibly I'm afraid of um, the early days of the revolution is when, when, when um, the Tsar's secret police, the Okhrana, was, was beating up uh, people uh, and their printing presses, what were known as Zamizdat printing presses, uh, which were private little printing presses trying to inform people about meetings. About you know, not, they, they weren't after a revolution, they were just after a Juma and a, and a, and a prime minister. You know, it was that simple. But no, they were. And then sort of the more extreme it got, then the more extreme got the leader of the Tsar got. And the, and the more extreme the Tsar got, the more extreme... Um, the, the opposition got until eventually you had the Russian Revolution and all the blood that came in, in, in train. So it's hard to see how <laughs> yeah. you just, I, I, Russia doesn't seem to want to be a democracy and there are plenty yeah. of countries that don't. And, and, and I don't think anyone can uh, uh, think that the internet can be used to force people to become democracies mm. uh, or the, to force them to believe that democracy is a template that can be laid over any country, whatever its tribal structures and, and work, because I think that's naive in, in, in the extreme. But maybe, uh, but, but maybe just simply having standards of freedom and flow of information for those to be made available and for all of us will will just like all knowledge help us know more and and knowing more may not be the instant magic door to to paradise but it's one step closer to it and just finally Stephen because I appreciate you're a very busy man just a quick point um, just a uh, real towel off on the index um, if you to look ahead what do you think the targets would be of the index would it be to get more people online to, to increase the figure from 80% say or 85% in the UK to 95% would that be the key target do you think or? Uh, yes I think I think in t the first targets would, would probably be uh, centre around availability and I'm always reminded of the story of um, uh, Alexander Graham Bell who well didn't in fact invent the telephone but he won the patent war and so <laughs> functionally he won the telephone 
And uh, someone asked him about this extraordinary instrument, which he could allow you to talk, you know, remotely yeah. to yeah. other people. He said, "Well, I don't want to be too boastful, but I, I'm fairly certain that um, in 10 or 20 years there'll be a telephone in every town in America." <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't see mm. the incredible yeah. de depth of penetration, and and I'm sure most of us, you know, and I think, you know, we would like to think that there is, as it were. a a really strong, powerful fibre optic broadband tap in every town and village in Britain, from which enough, enough uh, data, you know, enough up, uplink and downlink speed could be gained for everyone in that town and village, uh, and it can just spread to their homes that way. Or, you know, who knows? I mean, you know, maybe Tesla was right, and we should have taken our electricity by radio waves, and we should have um, we should have um, used to, to taken our radio through um, through copper wires. Instead, we decided to do the other thing. And we're sort of mixing our uh, electricity mm. copper wires, mm. um, both the electricity ones and the light and the um, and the phone ones to try and send data. But you know, they're all it's all it's all waves. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, there's definitely. no reason why why yeah. we shouldn't have it um, in different forms. I think yeah, countries like Estonia took a decision. You know, um, we are going to be the best, and they have they have. D data rates, uh, uh, broadband data rates, ten times, twenty times faster than ours. Unbelievable! And they're going to benefit from this. They're going to continue to benefit. They're going to start getting. They're going to start getting little companies. Oh, have you heard about this new app? This new amazing yeah, Spotify. Yeah. Type, it's a sort of music type thing, type thing, type thing. And they go no. So oh, apparently it's like Estonian, but it's really <laughs> brilliant. I'm going to hear that more and more and more. Yeah. And Britain will get left behind. And, and all the creative juices we have, and you know, the, the early days of the gaming industry, and and so on. Uh, all, all those all can fritter away very, very quickly unless it's encouraged, uh, and unless it's in, enabled by really classy availability everywhere um, and also that helps helps with the country the place that's most in the far reaches of the country in Norfolk where I live so I think yeah, yeah I, I hope that will improve I think all, go all governments realize it's got to you know it happened it's like the building of the railways and you know when, when, it's, when it suddenly starts to take off it's just yeah, unstoppable thank you anyway, Steve it's been an absolute pleasure thank you for your time